Hello, ECE240, and welcome to week three of our class. We are zooming along. We're ready heading into chapter six and seven for this week, and also a midterm. Let's kind of take a, a little uh, review of what we've learned so far. So you started with kind of learning the different theorists that talk about the different developmental stages, and you guys got to pick of which one you related to the most. You also got to learn about the importance of 80-90, that 90% 90 of critical brain development happens right before a child hits kindergarten by the time they hit age five. You got to learn the difference between nature versus nurture and the important role we as the adults play in nurturing our children all the way through. And that through nurture, how we can impact brain development and how we can impact lives. And that's what this whole class is about, is how us as nurturers, we can start to have positive relationships to make the biggest impact in someone's development. We've also learned about prenatal care and the importance of prenatal care. You've also learned about the importance of um, sensory development and the critical role that plays and brain development. So here we are. We're gonna take a little shift and move forward into cognitive developmental approaches. And what is cognitive development? Well, the term cognitive development refers to the process of growth and change in intellectual mental abilities. And what are these abilities? They are thinking, reasoning, and understanding, okay? We can put that and say knowledge, right? Memorizing something, being able to use the information that we have learned. This is what cognitive development is. And there are two famous theorists, Piaget, that you see there at the bottom, and Vygotsky that are the pioneers and still used today in our cognitive development approaches. And so while you're working on chapter six, I really want you to focus in on these two theorists because in our United States public education system, and for much of our education system period, these two theorists are used on how, in how we educate our youth and our children. The approaches that we use to educate our children, we primarily use these two theorists. When you're reading chapter six, go ahead and focus towards um, the end of when they bring up both theorists, they talk about the impacts they are both making in the world of education and how they're being used um, in, the ed in the world of education. Um, one of the famous things you'll learn is called ZPD. And NZPD, what does that mean? And so please focus in on those two theorists, focus on their impact when it comes to our education system, okay? Moving on, one of my favorite chapters is information processing. And I have to be honest, your book only covers a little bit of this. And to me, this is one of the most important things you will learn this semester called executive function skills. And I'm gonna take you to a Harvard website to really have you learn about the importance of executive function skills. But I would have to say this whole semester, this is gonna be one of the top five things that I hope you leave with and be able to use. Executive function skills are the mental processes that enable us to plan, focus our attention, remember instructions, juggle multiple things at one time. It's like being that traffic air control center where there's different airplanes and we're organizing so they don't crash amongst each other. We need to learn how to prioritize tasks, set goals, and be able to control our impulses. Did you know? that these skills, executive function skills, can be best learned during the first five years of age when critical brain development is taking place. Executive function skills can be broken down into three parts. Self-regulation, I'm sorry, 
Executive function can be broken down to three parts. And these three parts are working memory, mental flexibility, and self-control. Make sure you understand that all three of these must work together. And that three, the three of these are under the umbrella of executive function skills. Okay, your book really doesn't get that deep into it. And that's why we're gonna turn ourselves over and use some of the um, free resources that Harvard University actually has. So what I wanna bring you to is there is a link that takes you to Harvard University. You will see this link. Um, and when you go up here where it says science, I want you to go to executive function and self-regulation skills. Um, one of the most beautiful th things that I think you have to take full advantage of this week is to watch the actual video. Okay, it's around five or six minutes, but this video is gonna give you a true, clear understanding of what executive function skills are. This is a nice um, download here that shows you when we can best learn our executive function skills. And look at that, all the way by age five, and it still goes, start going up into our early 30s, okay? So here is the great opportunity for us to support brain development and support executive function skills. So this is another nice handout that you can use in this class and also for future classes, okay? Um, another great handout that I would like for you to have we're gonna go down here. Let's see if we can find it really quick. It's a great handout that I want you to have and it's called activities. Here's the beautiful thing here. So, all right, Mr. Ortiz, so executive function skills are critical, they're important. But how do I then support executive function skills with youth? Here is the perfect handout right here. Okay. Gives you an introduction to once again, what are executive function skills? And more importantly, it tells you the activities and the games that you can play with children that are age appropriate all the way starting with an infant going on to a preschooler, going on to an elementary child, and going all the way into a middle school and high school into adolescence. This is probably one of the greatest handouts you can have to be able to start to make an impact in someone's life. I'm about giving you tools. Think about this really quick as we kind of end um, this week. What are the skills that employers are looking for? They're looking for executive function skills. That's what they're looking for. So it's very, very, very important that we can actually have the opportunity to train and have children practice executive function skills so they can start to use these skills. If they start to learn them when they're little and small, before they're in kindergarten and during kindergarten, they can actually start to use them later in life. This is so important, critically important. If you go to our modules really quick, you will see for this week, week three, you have a quiz and a question or a discussion for um, cognitive development approaches. You have some nice videos here to watch as well, very short five minute videos. And then chapter seven gets you into the Center of Development Child from Harvard University is where you can go and get that information, okay? You actually, your quiz here is extra credit. You do not have a discussion for this week for this chapter, you don't, okay? Here's the reason, because you have a midterm, okay? And your midterm is chapters one through seven. And what they are 
It is 10. This is the open book midterm. There are 10 questions that should be answered in APA paragraph form. So what I mean by that is look over the inform look over the question, answer the question, use your book, use everything that I've given you so far this semester, the handouts, the videos, and answer the question. And if you're taking information from different sources, make sure you use an in-text citation and a full reference at the end. There's no reason to use a new form, just use this. And at the very end, just put references and then put all the references you have used in your in-text citation. You also have an extra credit um, question here as well, number 11, okay? But executive function skills, as it is one of the top five things that I think you should know when you leave this class is gonna be on your midterm and also your final. And you'll see question 10 has everything to do on executive function skills, okay? So this is what you have. Chapter six, you have your discussion. You also have your quiz. For chapter seven, your quiz is extra credit if you wanna take it, but you also have your midterm. And I'm actually giving you an additional week to complete your midterm, okay? I wish all of you a wonderful week. Um, I'm giving you extra time um, to complete your midterm. Of course, you can turn it in early if you want to. Um, this is a great opportunity during spring break. If you need to catch up on some assignments, you can. But when we come back after midterm, um, the class really kicks off and we start to have um, some amazing fun of learning more tools to impact our lives and also that we can have the nurturing ability to impact someone else's life. Have a wonderful week and take care. Bye-bye.